Now that we have our data matrix with event-related bold responses for the different conditions, we are going to make an animation of those data over time. So each of these flat maps here corresponds to a different condition. And this is actually just one frame. This is one time point of the animation. You can see in the title here that we are at time point six seconds after stimulus onset. And it's pretty neat to see that the activity gets further away from the Calcarin sulcus as the condition number increases. And uh, that makes sense because the condition number corresponds to the visual eccentricity. And so with each condition, the ring is getting further and further away from the fovea. Okay, now these data are smoothed. They've been convolved with a two-dimensional Gaussian blur. The smoothing makes the images a little bit easier to interpret. All right, so of course I've written much of the MATLAB code for you to help you get started, but as always, I encourage you to pause the video and see if you can finish my incomplete code on your own before coming back and watching me walk through my solution. So let's start by creating the Gaussian that we are going to use for spatial smoothing. Now, these three lines of code might look a little complicated, might look a little mysterious, but I hope you can see that in this line of code, there is the standard Gaussian formula. So we have e to the minus something squared divided by some scalar, and this scalar corresponds to the width of the Gaussian blur. Now, it's a little more complicated because we have a two-dimensional Gaussian for a two-dimensional image, and so we need to create a two-dimensional grid space on which to evaluate the Gaussian function, and then we have x squared and y squared. Okay, so let's run these two, uh, or these three lines of code. This last one is just a, uh, a normalization. Okay, so now we have our matrix G, and let's have a look at this. Let's see what this thing looks like. So image SC, G, and, well, it looks like a beautiful sun on some tropical island in Minecraft. All right, so here's like the, the nice blue sky. Everything's a little pixelated. But, you know, as I'm recording this, it's cloudy and drizzly here in Amsterdam. So it's nice to have at least a fake sun. Anyway, it's just my overactive imagination. So this is the Gaussian blur that we are going to slide across the image data to smooth it out. All right, so now it's time for the animation. Now there's a lot of code here in this cell. So what I wanna do is, you know, just take a step back and try to get the bird's eye view of what this code is doing from 30,000 feet. And then we will come back and start going through this line by line. So it looks like we're using this function tiled layout. Now, I haven't yet introduced you to this function in this course. It's a relatively new function in MATLAB, so you might be unfamiliar with it. I will talk more about this in a moment. But essentially, we are going to create a two by three grid of subplots. Okay, and then here's a comment that says, usually, most often, when you're creating animations in MATLAB, it's better to set up the figure first and then update the figure handles instead of redrawing the entire figure at each frame. So that's what we're gonna do here. We are going to loop over conditions, select the right subplot, create an image of just noise. This is really just junk. All we really need is to initialize this handle here that will point to this particular figure object. And then we're gonna set up some properties of each of the axes, and then that ends the for loop. So this is the loop where, where we are creating the figure and we're not actually running the animation yet. The animation itself actually starts from this for loop here where we're looping over time. So then inside this for loop over time, we loop over conditions. So this corresponds to the six different sub panels. And it looks like we're doing some processing. I'll talk about this in a moment. And then this is really the key line here that we are updating the image handle that we've created in the previous for loop. And we are updating the color data, which is the data matrix. And then update the plot title and then pause for 0.2 seconds to allow MATLAB to update the figure and allow us to visualize it. Okay, so that is the high level overview. Let's go back and make sure that we understand what this code is doing line by line. So again, we start by creating a figure with a two by three subplot geometry. And the output of this tiled layout function is a variable t, which is a graphics handle. So this is telling us information about this figure. And then we can use this 
to update all of the different subplots and the properties inside this figure. Okay, so then we are looping over conditions. So I'm going to set this uh, condition looping index to be one, and that's just going to allow us to go through this code line by line. So we run this function next tile. This is a function that you can use if you are using this function tiled layout. This is instead of selecting a specific subplot to work on, you're just going to work on, or you're going to tell MATLAB to go to the next particular tile or, or the next subplot. Okay, then we create an image. Again, um, as I mentioned, we don't actually care what this image is showing. We just really need this pointer over here that's going to allow us to replace the data in this image, the color data, with our real data. Okay, and then we are defining some settings for each image or each tile here. And these settings will remain the same during the animation. So let's see, it looks like there's already, you know, some questions here. Maybe we have to come back to this. So we're setting the color limit to be some really large number to go from minus 100,000 to a plus 100,000. I'm not sure that that's going to be an appropriate color scale for our data, given that our data are converted into percent change. But, you know, let, let's leave this for now and we'll come back to it later. So then we turn the axis off, axis image, that's all fine. And then we set the title to be the condition number. And then uh, I want to change the font size because I think this font is a little bit small. So let's make it a bit bigger. And, uh, okay, so here's our image here, and, and now we just see condition is huge. Now, if your monitor is a movie screen, maybe font size 140 is appropriate. I think that might be a little bit ambitious here. Let's try setting that to 14. Okay, there you go. That looks, that looks like a nice size. Okay, so let's run this for all of the six conditions, which corresponds to the six subplots and actually because i already ran next tile once you can see that when i ran this a second time it it recreated the first subplot so in fact we need to recreate the figure starting from here so run all of that and then we're good okay so now that the figure is set up we can run through the animation again i'm going to run through this one line at a time and so therefore i'm going to initialize the looping index variables here just to be their first value here okay so a lot of this code should look familiar this is the way that we converted the data from a vectorized format which you see here into a two-dimensional matrix that creates our flat map so we use this image lookup table this we've used before and here we have this extract mask lookup table, and that is to turn the non-brain pixels in the image to NAM. The only code that's new here is this one here, which says conv2, that's for two-dimensional convolution, and we want to convolve the data matrix, so the flat map, with our Gaussian kernel, which I jokingly said looks like uh, a beautiful sun in Minecraft land. Anyway, and uh, this third parameter is um, same, and that guarantees that the output of convolution is the same size as the input. Okay, so let's run all of this. And now what we want to do is, for each condition, we've gotten that uh, flat map, and then we want to update the appropriate handle for the appropriate image with the color data corresponding to time point map. So I write comma, time point map here. Okay, so let's run that line. And now we see the contours, but we actually don't see anything in there. It looks like it's a binary map where we just have two possible values. In fact, what's really going on is that the color limit is so extreme that all the colors just get washed out to zero, basically. Okay, so again, we're gonna need to fix that, but I, I wanna run through this animation first. Okay, so let's see, let's go through in this loop over all the conditions and that works for all the conditions. And then we want to update the plot title. So notice this is not the title of any individual subplot or any of these tiles. This is the title of the entire figure. So we're using this handle object T, which we created to refer to the entire chart, the entire graph. Okay, so let's see, we want to update the title and the property that we want to update is the string. And the thing that we want to update it to is this text. So brain map at time S. Okay, so let's run this and see how that looks. And uh, it doesn't look quite right. What is going on here? Well, let's see, let's see what we're actually updating it to. So I'm gonna select all the code 
in the square brackets and run that code. And now we see what the problem is. So we are looking at brain maps at time, and then this just lists all of the time points. In fact, we should only be accessing one element in here. So this is the time point. I call this variable time i. So we just want the time ith element in this vector of time points. So let me run this again just to make sure that this looks good, which it does. And now I'm going to update the plot title again. Okay, now we already know that we're going to need to fix the color limit. So let me run all of this code. I just want to make sure that we're actually getting something and it's not going to give us any errors. We can see the time is ticking up here. I'm actually going to go back to the command window and press control C and that quits out of the animation. You can see we only got up to 10 seconds. So to set the color limits, I'm actually going to use, I think we used three in, uh, in the previous video. So let's try a value of three and then uh, let's see, I'm going to run all of the code. So I want to recreate this figure, so run all the code and it's also, you can see the title here gets kind of, uh, it, it got caught underneath the subplot title. And so, so I just want to resize this figure a bit so MATLAB uh, figures out that the title should be higher. Now this looks nice. This looks uh, much nicer. You can see the activity is flowing over time. And uh, yeah, we get the eccentricity as you saw in the slides. And it looks nice and smooth. Now in the uh, screenshot that I showed, I had color map jet. So the color scheme was a little bit different. The last thing I want to mention in this video is that we are still doing quite a bit of processing here. In particular, this convolution is not super fast. This takes a little bit of time. So these four lines of code are actually adding quite some significant computation time to this whole loop. And that's going to slow down the entire animation. Now, if that's important because you want this animation to go faster, then what you probably want to do is get these four lines out of this double for loop. And instead, you would have another for loop over here where you would actually pre-compute these matrices so that inside the animation loop, you're doing as little computation as possible. Mostly inside the loop over animations, you really just want to be calling these set functions. So set the image, set the title, and pause. And all the other heavy computations should be done outside the for loop. Now, in this case, it's okay. I've left it this way for ease of coding. I'm just letting you know, you know, this is something you would want to keep in mind if you're actually creating these animations on your own.